Testing. One, two, peace. Three. Hello, so I'm back again. Um, this is about my 20th video in just over a week. What can I say? You'll have to excuse my appearance. This video is kind of just a little bit following on from the video that I have just uploaded, which I filmed a few days ago, um, about refeeding in anorexia. And one of the points that I touched on is the dramatic fluctuations in weight. Um, more distressing. My mouth tastes funny. Ugh, I think it's... The lip gloss that I've just put on tastes like shit. My mouth tastes like gone off incense. It's disgusting. I'm so distracted because my mouth tastes like shit. More distressing, dramatic weight gain. That's what this video is about. I'm going to try and keep it short because I know that my videos often ramble. But I've done some research because when I try and have looked to experts, um, and I'm talking about I have gone to an endocrinologist, I've seen one of the top eating disorder specialists in the country, and they've not really known what the fuck has gone on. And I've done some research about the dramatic weight shifts that can happen. And actually, it wasn't to do with anorexia that I was searching. I like, I'm a bit of a geek about that. I, I like researching and finding out what is happening. But I don't really have much choice because I want to know what is happening and no one has known. And I thought that I would just expand on what I talked about in the refeeding video. As I know it's such a distressing thing, just in case anybody else is interested. As I said in the original refeeding video, I'm not a medical professional, so this isn't medical advice. This is just what I've learned by doing my own research. It's information that anybody else could find. Um, and I hope that other people might find it helpful. Every individual and everyone's situation is unique. So I'm not saying that this is exactly what is happening to you because without being hooked up to monitors 24 7 you know i can't say that, that this is what's happening to everyone specifically if there are dramatic weight shifts but this is just information that i found so when you go through a period of fasting or starvation your glycogen stores are rapidly depleted sometimes literally to the point where their your body has no glycogen stores and glycogen is basically like your backup energy stores but I guess the best way to describe glycogen from what I can remember is glycogen is the energy that is stored in the body to be used so when glycogen stores are depleted through obviously starvation fasting etc when you when you start refeeding the first thing that your body will do is go hang on a minute if I'm going to be starved again I need to make sure that I've got storage just in case so it will the first thing it will do is store glycogen before your body uses the food for energy and repairs it will store the glycogen because it's terrified that it's going to be starved again now glycogen every gram of glycogen your body stores so every gram of glycogen holds on to three to four grams of water so every gram of glycogen essentially weighs five grams. Or if you're storing, say, 200 grams of glycogen a day, that is about 800 grams in that storage alone. So over a week, that's 5.6 kilograms just in that factor alone. 5.6 kilograms bear that in mind okay that's just in that factor alone and that is that's kind of what people talk about when they talk about water weight um so if you eat a big uh, a higher carbohydrate meal that's what it is because of the extra glycogen in your body it's the extra water stored with the glycogen. The next factor is actual water weight as in in terms of if you have been dehydrated and you start to rehydrate yourself uh, both in terms of fluid and food because obviously food has um, water in it as well. 
if you've been dehydrated then you're going to be hydrating your body and your body isn't going to urinate it all out because it needs that fluid um, so your cells and your organs and your muscles and your tissues and everything is going to be using that fluid instead of peeing it all out. When I came out of my three month fast, I'd been, not only had I been fasting, but I'd only been drinking 250 millilitres of water a day and then every other day 330. And then I tried to, when I started eating them again, I was trying to slowly increase it. Um, but I couldn't drink water, I replaced it with green tea. And I didn't wee for over a week. And I was like, went to the doctor and I was like, I've not weed for a week. And she felt my bladder and she was like, well, there's no wee in there. And I was like, well, where is it? And she was like, well, it's, it's, in, it's in your, you know, it's in your body. You know, your, your body's just using the fluid that you're putting in. And I was like, oh, well, I want it out. The next one is the actual sheer weight of the food. Um, if you think about it, you know, the actual weight of the food that you're eating is going into your body. You're not going to pull it all out, if, especially if you've got if your bowels are lazy and slow. Because of the laxative abuse that I've had, I have problems um, with my bowels, so um, I don't have that problem. Um, but the sheer weight of the food that you're putting in can contribute to weight gain, especially if, if you have a lot of vegetables. Vegetables weigh a lot. With your two main meals, if you have two servings of vegetables a day, say that's 200 grams um, per meal, and then add that up over, if, you, you know, if you're weighing yourself once a week, add that up over the week. If you're not going to the toilet very regularly, over the week, that's going to add up. And if you're you know, if you then weigh yourself once a week and you've not been to the toilet, it's actually, you know, if you see a larger jump in the scales than you're expecting, if you've got like a week's worth of food in you, then what do you expect? It doesn't mean that you've actually put on that much weight, it means all of these things adding up and you've got a week's worth of food inside you. It doesn't mean that's a week's worth of calories. I mean a week's worth of like food. It's not been pooed out yet. This last factor is really important. It's something that not a lot of people know and they don't believe. But you don't start laying down fat stores until your BMI is over 18.5. Yeah. Nobody believes that. Nobody thinks that's true. But it's, it's true. Your body will not start laying down actual fat stores until it is over 18.5. Now you're probably thinking, Charlotte, I feel squishy and soft, so you're talking bollocks. And yeah, you're right. You probably do feel squishy and soft, and that's the fluid that I was telling you about. Because that fluid feels squishy and soft. I've got the bloody hiccups again! Um, but your body doesn't start laying down fat stores until it's over a BMI of 18.5 because it's got all of these other things to do. Actually laying down fat stores, your body isn't going to do until it trusts you to be nourishing you better. Your body is busy repairing itself. So if you think, if you're grabbing handfuls of fat and going, well, Charlotte, I've got a BMI of under 18.5, you're talking shit. I will say, well, yeah, I do that all the time as well. I grab handfuls of fat. It's not fat. It's fluid. It's skin. Mainly it's fluid. Because, and it's horrible, because I get awful, and it's, it's painful. It's really, really painful. I get it all along my back, my lower back, and my hips. And it's so, so, so painful. But there's fuck all you can do about it, especially if you fast like I do, because if you if you go to the such extremes, it's worse. Um, if you abuse laxatives, diuretics, if you purge, then it's far, far worse. So don't do that. So that's my little add-on video. Please give it the thumbs up, subscribe, and I've got lots of videos coming your way. Um, 
So I hope you like it and I hope it's helpful.